Hi everyone, Ian Marsh here, and I'm going to talk to you about another sales prevention department. True case study only happened two days ago, in fact, one day ago. And uh, by sharing this, I'm hopefully going to help you relook at your sales processes and make sure that by hidden ninja tactics, you haven't accidentally built a sales prevention department of your own. Okay, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ian Marsh, CEO of Street Smart Business School, and I just help business owners get a saleable, profitable business happening. And uh, by doing that, just by applying some simple strategies that I refer to as street smart strategies uh, that make a very, very big impact on the results that they get. And so here's a real case study. In fact, it just happened to me. There's not a day goes by I don't witness a sales prevention department of some sort. So let me tell you the story. So again, uh, I have a reputation I've put on some quite large successful events in my time. And uh, by putting on those events, obviously I have to utilize hotels to run them. And so many hotels, are, you know, a lot of the core hotels that I use, I've invested at least $100,000, $300,000 with them uh, over the years. And so I have a very high lifetime value, if you follow me. So to tell you the story, now this time, I actually, I, I did reveal the name of the hotel previously, but I won't do it this time. I won't be that um, vindictive, but I was very hot under the collar yesterday when it happened. So let me tell you the story. So I was going to run a, another small event at this hotel, just with a few people in there. Bearing in mind, I've run three, four other events there and already invested well over $15,000 with them in the past. And so I put on another event and uh, truth be told, each time I had an a, a event there, it, they haven't gone that smoothly, okay? But I've persisted with them. Anyway, so I booked another event, we got a contract from them, we signed the contract, we sent it back, and apparently they sent us an email saying, hey, listen, can we have a deposit? Now my office didn't see that email, and uh, as a result, uh, yesterday, they got a, uh, an email saying, look, because um, we haven't received your deposit, uh, we have given the room to somebody else. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think that that seems fair? Contacting us by email, maybe I have a, a inverted view of the world, but you know this thing called a telephone, okay? I don't think it is that hard for an event manager to pick up the phone, call my office, say, excuse me, we haven't received your deposit yet, do you still want the room? And uh, then uh, maintain a great relationship. So what's been the effect of this? Well, it's larger than, I mean, this, uh, this uh, small event, I would have paid them two and a half K for this small event, but many of my events that I've run generally run into 30, 40 K. And so uh, over time, over a number of years, they've potentially lost at least a hundred K. If they had have become one of my favorite hotels, like the Mantra Legends, hey guys, you do a fantastic job out there. Mantra Legends, they know the meaning of service. So guys, recapping, okay, this hotel has now seriously lost mm, probably around about a hundred K over the lifetime value of a client simply because one of their team did not have the courtesy to actually ring our office and say, did you still want the room? Could we please get a deposit? Instead of just shooting an email, it's as bad as, you know, if you've got teenage children and rather than call their friends and say, oh, how are you going? They shoot a blooming text to them. It drives me crazy. So again, look at your sales prevention department uh, analyze and learn through vicariously through this experience that I've just had and make sure that you're not accidentally doing because again to be fair to this hotel management would probably expect one of their team to actually pick up the phone and say do you still want the room however because there was not a documented process and a system for that team member to follow the event manager to follow uh, she just said, oh, I've got a lot to do. I'll just shoot an email out, bugger it. I can't be bothered with the effort of ringing somebody. 
And uh, as a result, it's cost them dearly. Not to mention um, that obviously I know a lot of people that run events and uh, obviously I'm going to say, well, there's one place I would not recommend you go to. You get the idea? So yes, they've probably lost about 100K from me, but they've probably lost much more than that from other promoters that might use them. So again, there you go, guys. Look at your sales division in your company, whatever your industry is. Make sure you don't have a sales prevention department. And you might like to take a, a quiz, a business clarity quiz I put together. It's called facethetruth.com.au. And if you go to that URL, facethetruth.com.au, you'll be able to do a business clarity test and it'll give you some aha moments and some insights on things that you can, sometimes we forget to think about the core basics that we should be looking at in our business. So I think you'll find it interesting. Anyway, you can get it at facethetruth.com.au. Guys, I'll leave you with it. Just ensure you're street smart in how you're running your business, not sheep smart. Oh, and one last thing, the cost of inaction clock. So don't think you have time to fix this. When's the best time to fix a fail sales, yeah, a fail sale prevention department? The answer is now, because you don't know, maybe there's someone on the phone as we speak that is preventing a sale happening in your company. Until next time, see you soon.